William Martin was considered an expert in herpetology. He had been fascinated with timber rattlesnakes since he was a boy, and that passion grew into an independent research career. But getting up close to these venomous snakes was a dangerous living. With his unwavering enthusiasm at the grand old age of 80, William continued to handle his favorite rattlers, but his luck was about to run out. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. Ever since he was a boy, William Marty Martin was fascinated with snakes, specifically timber rattlesnakes. In fact, at just 13 years old, he made an incredible discovery while exploring the Bull Run Mountains in West Virginia. He came across a population of timber rattlers that had never been documented before. He managed to convince Dr. Leslie Berger, a professional herpetologist, to travel out to the area to confirm his finding. His fascination with the snakes continued through his childhood, and at the age of 17, he became a founding member of the Virginia Herpetological Society. Although William's hobby as an amateur herpetologist was paused while he served as a paratrooper in the Vietnam War, he soon continued with his reptile studies when he returned home. He then completed a degree in biology from the University of South Florida. As he grew up, he remained close to the Bull Run Mountains and continued to log his findings, contributing significantly to rattlesnake research and providing comprehensive reports on the snake's population sizes. He knew how to handle the venomous snake safely, but during his work, he was bitten more than once. Each time, the pain began searing at the side of the bite and spread throughout his body. He grew weak and felt lightheaded and knew it was time to seek urgent medical attention. It's recommended that victims from rattlesnake bites receive antivenom within 30 minutes of being bitten, but this is not always possible, especially as many bites take place in remote locations. Within six hours, local tissue death is likely to occur, but trouble breathing can occur much sooner. Incidences like being bitten never put William off continuing to study the snakes. If anything, it made him more determined to educate people about them and to try and change people's perceptions. He was made of tough stuff, and despite his small stature, he had an almost unrivaled resilience, which served him well during his escape from a Colombian prison after being falsely imprisoned. William's reptile work was all done independently. He conducted the research through his genuine interest and love for the animals. He was not affiliated with any university or research unit. Instead, he secured small grants along the way to fund his work, and had always preferred to follow a more natural research route, such as that of earlier explorers. He traveled to Africa, Asia, and South America studying venomous snakes. He even appeared alongside Steve Irwin on one of his Crocodile Hunter episodes, showing Steve the timber rattlers he knew so well. But handling snakes all the time, some would argue that, although they are not typically aggressive snakes, his luck would eventually run out. Timber rattlers are a type of pit viper, and although they are venomous, they rarely inflict harm on humans because they are so shy, often slithering away as soon as they detect people nearby. Even when they are accidentally stepped on, they tend not to bite as they prefer to conserve their venom for prey. Being able to find timber rattlesnakes to document their movements and population numbers is no easy feat as they are considered elusive and are listed as endangered in Virginia. Similarly, climbing the trails throughout the Bull Run Mountains Preserve can be challenging. But when you're in your 80s, those things become even more impressive. More recently, he documented the effects of climate change and human encroachment on the populations. Throughout much of the year, he trekked through the wilderness in search for the elusive species. Although William had turned 80, age didn't seem to slow him down. He still loved his rattlesnakes, and he still continued his work. He regularly trekked up into the mountains to some of the most remote places to find the snakes. The previous year, at the age of 79, he trekked for more than seven hours in a single day to search for the snakes, and came home without having found any. Usually, though, he would find them, and he would make his counts and record the numbers. Occasionally, he was accompanied by the preserve's manager, Joe Valari, who, by his own admission, often struggled to keep up with the 80-year-old. But with old age, sometimes comes vulnerability. 
Although physical and mental strength go a long way to staying active, sometimes age is against you regardless of what you do to try and counteract that. Despite large numbers of rattlesnakes in North America, spreading from Texas to New England, fatalities from bites are rare. The species is one of about 30 venomous snakes living in the U.S. Although almost 3,000 snake bites are reported every year, venomous snake bites account for only around five deaths each year, and these are typically in the very young, the very old, or those with weakened immune systems. On August 2, 2022, William was at home in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. By now, he was considered a leading authority on timber rattlesnakes and was widely known across the herpetology community. He was about as experienced as they come when it came to venomous snakes. At home, he had a captive timber rattler. That morning, as William went to handle the snake, disaster struck. He picked the snake up as he had done so many times before. The snake was agitated and something spooked it. And rattlesnakes can strike at six and a half miles per hour. This might not sound like much, but when you consider the short distance they cover with a single strike, they can lunge up to three feet in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, William's pet snake lunged forward and struck him. It was so rapid that William didn't have time to react. He immediately lowered the snake back into the tank and inspected the bite. Two small puncture wounds were just visible on William's skin. Some blood trickled out of the wound, a sure sign that he had been struck. But was this a venomous bite or a dry bite? Venomous snakes can sometimes deliver dry bites, on average around 25% of the time. This is when they bite, but they don't inject any venom. They can serve as a warning bite without the lethal effect. But William's bite, unfortunately, wasn't a dry one. The tingling sensation around the injury grew. It was a feeling that he was familiar with, the one which he knew meant needed medical attention. He called out for his wife of 16 years, Gwen Miller, and she came immediately. At his age, it was a worry for Gwen to witness, and she drove William to the nearest hospital, where he was admitted for treatment. Although it seemed like a routine procedure that William had been through before and come out on the other side unharmed, this time something was different. Things took a turn for the worse. As the venom began coursing through William's body, it began to destroy tissues and targeted organs. William's vision became blurred, and although he received anti-venom in a timely manner, his breathing became labored. Doctors continued to treat him throughout the night, but complications arose and he became weaker. His wife and daughters were called, and they sat by his bedside during his final moments. William died the day after being bitten by his captive timber rattlesnake. Tributes poured in as the news of his passing spread. Stories were told of the incredible man he was and how he survived some truly challenging situations while traveling abroad and serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. However, although he lived a long and adventurous life with many incredible travel tales, he was still sorely missed by his friends and family.